Hello, I'm Nils, and in this video I'll be talking about a supplement called AKG and the question of whether taking AKG supplements may be an effective way of extending the human lifespan, and if so, if there are types of AKG supplements that might work better than others. The version of AKG that most people are focusing on, calcium AKG, costs $149 for a 30-day supply. That's almost $5 a day. Is it worth it? If you have a limited budget, should you be choosing it over other supplements? If your funds are tight, are there other ways to raise your AKG levels less expensively or even for free? I should say first that my personal supplement bin has over 40 supplements in it, and I take as many as 30 of them every day. I cycle through them so I'm not taking the same ones every day, though there are some key ones in my everyday regimen. One that I added a few months ago and have been taking in one form or another is AKG. I do like it, and I plan to continue taking it, but I don't take the $5 a day version. The kind that I take costs about 25 cents a day, and it seems to be working well for me as far as I can tell. A recent study found that mice given AKG produced higher levels of a molecule that inhibits inflammation. The type of inflammation that it inhibits is associated with three of the major disease conditions associated with aging, cancer, heart disease, and dementia. In addition, it's been found to be effective in protecting both human and animal cells against the metabolic effects of high aluminum exposure. Can it really extend the human lifespan, though? Based on the above, I'd say probably. It's been known for years that it can extend the lifespan of insects in lab studies. For example, being given AKG resulted in an increase of the maximum lifespan of fruit flies by more than 8% and an increase of more than 50% in the lifespan of one type of worm. And the calcium salt of AKG has been found to dramatically extend the lifespan in mice. Can it really extend the human lifespan though? Based on the above information, I'd say possibly. It's been known for years that it can extend the lifespan in insect studies. For example, it was shown in a 2014 study that being given AKG resulted in an increase of the maximum lifespan of fruit flies by more than 8%. And a later study showed an increase of more than 50% in the lifespan of one type of worm. In a more recent study, which was published in Cell Metabolism, there was confirmation that it works in mice also. AKG-fed mice scored more than 40% higher than the control animals on tests showing their resistance to frailty, a serious condition of aging. They had better hearing, better hair color, keeping their original color instead of going gray, which also implies a stronger resistance to cellular senescence, better walking gait, and better grip strength. All the mice given AKG showed improvement in these areas, but female mice did even better. They were shown to live up to 20% longer after AKG treatment than the control mice. So AKG may turn out to be a key molecule to support women's longevity, if the same turns out to be true in human studies. These are fascinating studies, but it's important to remind ourselves that all of the studies so far showing life extension benefits were performed on lab animals, not humans. There are plans to test it on human volunteers soon, but for the moment I'd put it in the interesting but not proven category in terms of human life extension. There's somewhat greater evidence, in my opinion, supporting the use of compounds such as metformin and rapamycin. Another issue for me is that there are many other nutrients which show similar promise, 
but have been largely ignored by the anti-aging community. One of my longtime favorites is pantothene, a derivative of pantothenic acid, which has been shown to be effective at lowering cholesterol, preventing inflammation, boosting the immune system, improving athletic performance, protecting against neurodegeneration, and prolonging the lifespan of insects in laboratory studies. Unlike the calcium salt of AKG, pantothene can't be patented, and I suspect that's why it's been largely ignored, and also maybe why it's still so affordable. I do like AKG, and again, I do take it. It's, it's an important supplement to me, but it's just one of many compounds that I find interesting and valuable. I feel energized and more alert when I take it. I take two forms of it, actually. Number one, plain AKG, not bound to any mineral. The brand that I'm currently taking is Double Wood, which is very affordable. I take plain AKG on my fasting days. And number two, AAKG, or arginine AKG, in which it is bound to arginine. I take AAKG on my feasting days, about an hour before my first meal. The brand I'm currently taking is Nutricost. I've thought of taking calcium AKG, the one which was shown to increase the lifespan so dramatically in mice, at least in female mice, but I've decided not to at this point, partly because of the price. If the price does come down, I'll definitely think about adding it to my supplement stack. Another reason that I'm not taking calcium AKG yet is because my AKG levels are probably already pretty high, partly because I'm taking the kinds that I already mentioned, but partly because I'm in ketosis a large amount of the time, which in itself should be raising my AKG levels higher than they'd otherwise be in a person my age. I'm not eating a strictly ketogenic diet, and I've stopped measuring my ketone levels, but I am sure that I'm in ketosis because I'm burning fat most of the time because I'm in a fasted state, which is by definition a fat burning state and one in which our AKG levels should be higher. I fast two full days every week, fasting 36 hours at a time from dinner on one day till breakfast a day and a half later, and I usually skip breakfast and have lunch as my first meal around noon or one on my feasting days. And I do a three to five day fast or fasting mimicking diet once a month. So again, I should be in heavy ketosis probably around half of the time. The other reason that I don't take calcium AKG is because when it's digested, my understanding is that the calcium actually splits off and is metabolized separately, just as arginine does when arginine AKG is taken. This suggests that if there's anything special about calcium in terms of life extension, which I don't know to be true, but if it is true, we could likely get the same benefit just by taking a little calcium along with one of the less expensive AKG supplements. Now, it could, of course, turn out that there are some benefits to the higher-priced calcium AKG that I'm not aware of yet and haven't been clarified yet, and if that does turn out to be true, I'd certainly consider taking it. The other reason that I'm taking AKG but not making it the centerpiece of my anti-aging regimen is because I am a guy, and the studies that show the most profound anti-aging benefits in mice were done on female lab animals. The other question I wanted to take a look at is whether it's better to take AKG in small doses staggered throughout the day or to take one big dose once a day if you do decide to take it daily. In the mouse study, the animals were given calcium AKG in their feed and drinking water. And so they were getting it, if you will, dribbling in throughout the day whenever they would go have a snack or a drink, they'd get a little AKG. And they did get very promising results. But this doesn't mean that it was proven that this is the best way to take it. 
to establish which is better. They would need to do the experiment again, setting up an additional control group, which is taking just one dose once a day for comparison. Until that's done, there's really not any evidence that I'm aware of to say that one approach is better than the other. I hope that you found the information in this video useful. I'm open to your thoughts on it, and I'd be curious whether you have taken AKG, whether you're still taking it, whether you're taking AAKG or calcium AKG or some other form, and I would invite you to post your comments below.